Hello and welcome to The Real Hustler. My name is James and in today's show, we're gonna be looking at the pros and cons of the blockchain part two, because this week we're gonna look at those deep dive challenges and the disadvantages that it's causing to businesses. So come and join us and we'll kick off today's show. So the blockchain has been surrounded by plenty of hype, like hype that's beyond us in some ways. As I found out this week in something that I will show you later on in the week. But right now, let's just take a look at really what our main disadvantages are and the challenges that are being faced because business leaders are really interested in the blockchain, but there are challenges and risks to it. And it's those parts that are kind of holding back many of businesses at the moment. At its most basic, the blockchain refers to peer-to-peer -peer distribution ledger technology that can record transactions between two parties effectively and verifiably in a permanent way, enabling trafficking and traceability. So this emerging technology has game-changing potential for a wide range of applications far beyond its roots in cryptocurrency. For example, a study by the APQC found that pharmaceutical companies have developed blockchain applications to secure supply chains for medicine and confidential test data. In collaboration with IBM, Walmart even developed a blockchain system that could cut product tracing times from seven days to 2.2 seconds. That's unreal. Now, in April 2021, the Ethiopian Ministry of Education announced a deal with blockchain developer IOHK to create blockchain-based digital IDs for 5 million students. So along with the benefits of some early adopter organisations, there are many getting advantages of the blockchain. Broader awareness of the technology is growing with a rapid pace. While some have found that 66% of organisations are familiar with the blockchain in 2019, within a year that number had grown to 80%. Now that's a big number if you think about how fast the growth adoption is happening. And if you looked at the general growth curve, that shows we're starting to get to the exponential levels where early adoption really start to grow. Now that said, most organizations are still in the early stages of adoption. So when they referred back to their report, they found that only 12% of participants actually live either in the blockchain or as a service that they provide. What's holding back the 34% of respondents who aren't exploring the use of the blockchain? And this is where we start to explore the top five blockchain disadvantages and the challenges that they present to organizations. And then we'll look at some ideas of possibly how they can be overcome by those organizations. Number one, lack of adoption. So when we look at the adoption itself, it's like everything, it's everyone has to come on board with it or at least a large number of people have to come on board with it in order for it to become acceptable or at least even usable. Because if you only have some people using the technology, then it means that they become inoperable with the other businesses that aren't using it. For example, if I was to say that years ago, at, before we had digital, and before we even had, say, credit cards, and we only had cash and checkbooks, if I remember correctly, um, when you wanted to pay for something, you would put it through on, on a check and you'd literally, I remember my mum going into a shop and buying something using a check. Now, nowadays, check books, well, I didn't think they exist anymore. I could be wrong. But we've got to a point now where digital has gone that far that even having a card is a bit of a weird way to pay for an app transaction, or at least it is for me, because I literally use my phone and my watch for everything. Contactless now payments have changed the game again from that payment but the point is in order to be able to get to this point where we can adopt it we need enough people to switch to the latest technology and the blockchain has that difficulty at the moment because when we're looking at supply chains the APQC found that in their study only 29% of businesses have actually adopted blockchain technology we can see where this is going. It's a problem because there has to be enough people in the supply chain for it to actually work. That means that you can't just take one business and say, well, 
we've got this new supply chain, we've got all this part that works really well, and if our partners came on board, we would be able to use it and get the efficiencies out of it, it's if they come on board, because that's the thing. Some businesses have started to adopt it, like we mentioned at the start, but a lot of businesses aren't adopting it, and that's the real issue. So we've got the other percentage of organizations who haven't even looked to adopt it, those that are kind of on the fence for adopting it, and it's only those ones that have adopted it, would they be able to you know, communicate with other businesses that have adopted the blockchain? Yet there's still plenty of reasons to still be very optimistic about all of this, because businesses are starting to see the actual pain points in their businesses, and in things like the supply chains, that with the actual technology, they could start to overcome. Now, as we know with everything, if we have enough of a pain, we start to move on it when it becomes that much of a pain that the benefits outweigh the pains. And the blockchain is getting to that point now where it's starting to really take fruit and people are really starting to think about those possibilities that the blockchain can resolve for them. Now, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, several large pharmaceutical organizations came together with Deloitte to form a blockchain for a clinical supply chain industry. Working with the blockchain developer Ledger Domain, the group built an application called KitChain. Among other benefits, the application allows companies to track shipments and package medicines, which not only help secure the blockchain, but also reduce the reliance on paper logs and ensures the security of medical trial data. Number two, the skills gap. Now, with regards to the skills gap, it's the age old problem that we normally face, where like with the NHS in the UK, where we don't have say enough nurses or don't have enough doctors, we have a point where demand outstrips the actual supply. And with regards to the blockchain, in 2019, there was a 500% increase in the requirement for blockchain engineers. Now you can see that, that that comes with a problem because suddenly we've got loads of businesses really interested in being able to adopt the actual blockchain, but without the right people who are skilled enough in being able to deploy it and make sure that it can work within the organization, then we get to a problem where we're being limited by the, our ability to push forward with it. You see the expanse and the difficulty of talent acquisition in this area only adds to concerns that organizations have about adopting blockchain and, and integrating it with legacy systems. Now, one way to counteract this skills gap is to use blockchain as a service which enables organizations to reap the benefits of, of blockchain, having to invest significantly in technical talent behind it. Also, we've already seen the model narrow the skills gap in the context of other technologies, such as robotic process automation, otherwise known as RPA. Rather than having to develop robots and write code in-house, organizations can now look up numerous vendors who have the expertise to implement RPA and customize it for their organization's needs. Users only need to know the basics of technology, a bit like point and click on your desktop, so that they don't need to be programmers to take advantage of its benefits. Similarly, users will need to understand and how to execute the smart contracts, which use blockchain to automatically execute actions once the terms of the contract have been met. But the point is, is that they won't need specialized knowledge about the intricacies of the distributed ledgers. The blockchain as a service has the potential to mitigate the blockchain skills barrier. Number three, trust among users. Now, the actual technology itself is a good technology, but it's still let down by the users themselves or potentially, at least when we look at the challenges for this, it presents in two different directions. Firstly, the businesses themselves may not fully trust the blockchain technology. But the second one is, is that they may not trust all the users on it. Now, when we say all the users, it's mainly really around the, the users that are really unknown. Now, when we think about what the blockchain offers, it offers us that full ledger. Because we've got those records, we can now see everything that's happened within that transaction. Now, with regards to the ledger, every person on the actual network 
has a copy of the actual ledger. Now, with that actual ledger, we can see when the transactions are actually happening in real time. And also because they're being signed off by every node on the network who then have to agree and can have that consensus in order for it to become a true part on the blockchain, then that gives us the, the actual verification that the transactions actually happened. Business leaders have found though, there's a greater level of trust when there is a private blockchain network where there's no unknown users. To build trust amongst users, platforms such as Tradelands, a global logistics network created by the Maersk and IBM using the IBM blockchain platform, show what can happen when peers and competitors work together to develop solutions to common challenges. Unlike anonymous public blockchains on the Tradelands private network, members are known as trust anchors and known to the blockchain network based on a cryptographic identities. TradeLens uses permissioned blockchain to offer immutability, privacy, and traceability of shipping documents. Number four, it's not surprising that financials actually come into this at some point. We should have almost guessed this, but thanks to the pandemic, it has actually made things slightly more worse. I say slightly bit more worse, maybe quite a bit more worse, because now businesses have less surplus cash than they had previously. And with that being the case, it's a lot, with the risks as well involved, it makes it a lot harder to take on a project that's a, quite a lot more risky. Now, that all said and done, the pandemic also shown us that technology may be moving faster than previously thought. Previously, before working at home, was never really a thing. Now, because of the pandemic, working from home has really become a reality for so many people. And people, while there are people that work 100% from home, such as myself, there's also other people who work hybrid. Now, these were things that didn't really even exist before, but the IT departments in many businesses showed that actually, if given the opportunity to, or the need to, they can move a lot faster than previously thought. Because when we look at this, where people are actually now working at home, it was thought that that would take another, like, 10 plus years for us to be able to do that. The pandemic changed that and actually brought it forward by a, probably a decade. So a close look at the examination of the barrier shows that this connected to an underlying lack of organizational awareness and understanding of blockchain. We found that the awareness of new technologies becomes more widespread. The ability to effectively make a business case for their adoption moves accordingly. This will be true of blockchain as well and provide the blockchain with advocates of focusing on building the business case that demonstrates how the benefits of the technology will offset the resources needed to implement it. Number five, blockchain interoperability. Now with the blockchain, when, as organizations start to adopt the blockchain, there's a tendency for those businesses to actually develop their own systems and ways of working with the blockchain, which means there's gonna be characteristics in each blockchain that makes it different from the next blockchain or the next network. Now, what that rarely means is that with these differences, they, when it comes to being able to communicate with, within the, these blockchains or through the different network part of those blockchains, there's gonna be interoperability because there is no standard form of communication between them. These blockchain intermediacies also include being able to share, see and access these blockchain networks without any intermediacies or central authorities. As the lack of interoperability make the mass adoption almost impossible task. As in a post pandemic business environment where collaboration across functions with suppliers and customers is essential, interoperability for blockchains will be critical. Really, it is the only way that organizations will truly get the most value out of their blockchain investments. The good news is that over the past year, we have seen an increasing number of interoperability projects meant to bridge the gap between different blockchains. Many of them are actually aimed at connecting private network to each other or to public blockchains. These systems will ultimately be more useful to business leaders than prior approaches that focused on public chains and cryptocurrency related tools. We've looked at the advantages and we've looked at the disadvantages. And now we've got to the final point where we can make our decision. 
is it right for you? Is it right for your business? You'll now be able to make that informed decision on whether or not you will want to adopt it. Now, whether or not you do adopt it, Web3 is coming. It depends on when you adopt it is more likely the real question. It's because rarely it's like the internet itself. There were the people who refused to adopt it at the early stages, but eventually if those businesses didn't adopt it early enough, those businesses are the businesses that unfortunately dwindled away and died. Now, I don't want that for you as much as you don't want that for yourself, but I don't want to scare you into it either. At the end of the day, you need to come onto it at the right point for you in your business. For us as a business, we looked at the blockchain and looked at Web3 itself and we were highly excited by the possibilities of what it could offer because it's now at a stage where for my business, it worked. Now for your business, it may not. And there are certainly many circumstances around why or why not, why not it might not work for you. But there may be plenty of reasons why it does. And it should be those why you look to explore it and look to adopt it maybe if certain parts of it suit your business. Now, please do consider to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any comments or suggestions, write them below. But just click the subscribe button, hit a like, hit the bell button, and hey presto, you'll start to hear some notifications every time that we send out a new publication or video. Now, that's it for today's show. Thank you very much and enjoy your day.